Hello folks, this is Debbie from Wild and Woolly in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. What I'd like to do today is a simple tutorial on Magic Loop. So I have started here, I'm, I've only got a few stitches, so it doesn't take me forever to get around the circle. So I cast on 20 stitches. If you're doing a complicated pattern, you're going to want to divide these evenly. If you're just doing knit all the way around, it doesn't matter too much. I'm just going to be doing knit all the way around. So I don't need to count my stitches. What I'm going to do is pull my stitches to the end of my cable and I'm going to divide them. And I'm just going to eyeball it right here to divide them. Like I say, if you're doing a complicated pattern, you need to count, make sure that you've got exactly the right stitches. So to divide it, I'm going to pull the loop out of the end. I still have my circle, well, it's not a circle yet, but I still have my stitches joined here, but um, I have the loop. This is where the magic loop is. And this allows you to actually knit in a circle uh, with a longer cable. You can knit just about anything. So I've divided it and I'm going to pull my stitches up here to the end of my needle. It's important that all your stitches are vertically the same direction. You don't want them spinning around like this when you join them because you'll get it twisted. You'll end up with a Mobius cowl, which you don't want. You want them all to be straight so that your circle is nice and even and straight. So if you line them up this way, you can see they're very straight and knock them in the same direction, hold it like this. Now, some people don't join in the round when they're doing magic loop. I like to because it, it avoids all laddering. So the way that I do that, I take the first stitch on the right needle and I pop it onto the left and across the left needle over onto the right. You can do it with a crochet hook or you can just pop it over with your fingers like this. That's the right needle to the left or the front needle to the back and then the back needle cross over to the front. And this way you've instantly joined in the round. I like to do it because it makes this nice and neat when you're doing your magic loop. So we've crossed in the round, we've got our stitches, we've got them evenly distributed between our front needle and our rear needle. And now a working yarn, um, you'll pull to the back and you'll take it out of the loop right here. And I'll show you what I mean by that because I'm going to, this rear needle, you're gonna hold this yarn, these stitches nice and snugly so that they don't move, so they stay vertical. I'm going to pull the rear needle out this will become my working needle. Here's my magic loop. These stitches are on the cable. That's why I'm holding it to keep them nice and even and stop them distorting and stop them getting out of line. So this will be my working needle. If I don't take this yarn before I pull this out, if I don't take it and put it over here, out of the loop, out of the loop is what I said. I'm gonna show you what that means. If it's down here and you start knitting, your yarn gets trapped in the loop. So before you pull your needle out, pop this out of the loop and then you're going to start nip, knitting. A lot of people don't uh, care for magic loop because they don't know how to eliminate the laddering on the sides. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to knit two stitches and you're going to anchor your needle into your third stitch. Here's your first stitch, your second stitch, your third stitch, anchoring your needle. I'm going to take my working yarn, now I've anchored my needle, and I'm going to put a nice even tension on it so that I um, tighten both of these at the same time. You're not going to tug it, you're not going to yank it, you're just going to do a nice even tension and both of them will tighten up and you don't get any distortion on this first stitch here and you don't get laddering on the side. So I'm going to keep the tension going and pull it around the needle for my third stitch and that will eliminate all of those unsightly ladders at the side of your work. It's a nice trick. Not everybody does that. Um, some people stagger their end of their loops so that they don't get the ladder in or that they reduce the ladder in. But if you do this two stitch tension method, you won't have any trouble with that at all. So now I am at the first half of my first round. I emptied out this needle, so I'm gonna drop it I'm not, I'm just gonna get it out of the equation so I don't get confused. So these stitches I just completed, they now 
turn to the rear and I know that they go in the back because here's my working yarn and when you're starting um, a, a, the second half of your round or any round your working yarn will be on your rear needle I'm going to pop it out of the circle like I showed you before this is the front these stitches have not been worked yet these have already been worked these have not so I'm going to pop the needle back onto the front stitches make sure everything's nicely lined up again see our nice little soldiers right here this working yarn is out of the loop I'm going to take the rear needle keep everything snug and this again becomes my working needle into the front of my work and I'm going to continue on and this is the second half of my first round I've got two stitches I'm anchoring the third and I'm going to pull the tension you see these two move right here you can zoom in on this and see it if you'd like to I'm going to continue knitting so I'm on the second half of my first round. Now, I feel comfortable knowing where the beginning of my round is. It's certainly when you're just starting with um, Magic Loop, it's a really good idea to get this last stitch right here. It's a really good idea when you get, when you're at the beginning of your round, you know that you are, because here's your cast on yarn. But if you, once you get further and your cast on yarn gets further down your work, you might get a bit confused. So just pop on a stitch marker on the front. It, just a little round one is fine. You don't need an opening one, but this is just what I have to hand. So again, we have to put this over here, get it out of the loop. We have completed one round. So we're one round of our circle. So this comes out stitches go back on the front this is the first half of our second round that's coming up I put the marker here so I know this is the beginning of my round pull the needle from the back and come into the front oops look that's just my uh, cast on right there so here's the front is the uh, beginning of the round and then I start knitting again and it's just oops, excuse me I split my yarn and it's just a combination a continuation of this to knit a circle so there's my two stitches I'm anchoring in the third I'm going to tug one and two keep the tension go into three continue to the end of this row this first half of my circle and I know that the first half of my circle you see I've got my two magic loops here one on this end one on this end I know that the first half of my circle will be complete when I empty this needle. That's the first half of my circle. Drop it. If you don't drop it, you get a bit confused and sometimes this ends up in the back and you don't know whether you're coming or going. So drop it, get it out of the way. You just completed these stitches. This is your second row. You just completed them. They go to the back. Your working yarn is here at the back. Put your front stitches on the needle. You haven't worked these, you haven't worked this for the second time yet. So you put them on the needle, line them all up nicely again. Working yarn comes out, doesn't get locked in the loop, comes out over the top of the needle. And then we start again. And we are on the second half of our circle. Two stitches, anchor in the third, get a nice tension here, continue on to your third. You don't have to do that but if you don't do it the odds are you're going to get you know really loose stitches where your edges are and you won't typically won't be happy with that outcome and this is just a good way to eliminate it i like it so now i have just completed i know that i'm back at the beginning because here's my stitch marker but also here's my cast on yarn but here's my stitch marker so i know that i just completed two rounds and you can see we're knitting in the round. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take this off to show you what I'm going to do. Because some people get worried and sometimes they pull this needle out too far. <gasps> oh no, they lose their loop and they get very anxious about it. Oh my Lord, I've lost my loop. What am I going to do? It's a very easy fix. But before I fix it, I want to show you that we are actually creating a circle. See this? 
a beautiful, nice, even circle. And we don't have any laddering on our edges because we're doing that two second stitch tension. And it's just lovely. It's a really lovely way to create a circle. Very versatile. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. But now I'm going to show you if you accidentally pull pull this too tight and you lose your magic loop, all you do is you come back, you pull it out and you're back to where you were. Remember, when you lose track of where you are and you're pu pulling it back like this, you know the back row, the back needle has the working yarn. So you know this needle goes to the rear, the other needle goes to the front. It's a lovely, lovely technique. Um, and that's it. That's the magic loop. A lot of people avoid it because they're afraid of it, because they don't understand it. But you can go back, you can play this video, you can rewind it, pause, play, rewind, pause, play as many times as you want to. And, and once you get the hang of this, gosh, you're going to wonder what you did without it for the rest of your life. The beauty for me of this is if I was doing this without magic loop, I would be on double pointed needles and you can see these fingers aren't up for double pointed needles. I lose them all over the place. For me, you've got your needles in one place. You're not losing them. You're not losing track of anything. Just keep your working yarn at the back. You know where you are. We have these magic loop books available. The magic loop working around on one needle by Sarah Hoshkas. And, um, it's a very good descriptive book. It's very helpful, just if you lose track of where you are. But as I say, you can just replay this video as many times as you would like to. And that's it. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all luck with your magic loop.